Over the years, the term alley-oop has taken many forms. It's hard to think something so quintessentially basketball could start with anything but a lob pass. But like all the most fascinating aspects of sport, it all started with some high-flying Frenchmen wearing tights. The term alley-oop is derived from the French term allez up, a phrase used by acrobats in the circus before a lift or a jump. It's kind of like saying, here you go, or let's go, so it's fitting. But the Americanized alley-oop took a hard left turn, entering the lexicon as the titular character in a 1930s comic about a caveman who traveled through time. We were closer with the circus people. The term entered the sports world in football, not basketball. It was part of the 49ers playbook where quarterback Y.A. Tittle would throw a jump ball to high-jumping R.C. Owen. Fun fact about R.C. Owen, he once used his leaping abilities to block a field goal at the crossbar. But you can't do that anymore. All that bullshit aside, there are two different players that are most often credited with taking the alley-oop from the playground to the spotlight. Airline Al Tucker, who got his nickname from forcibly removing people from their bench spot, spots they paid for like everyone else, and David Thompson, one of the greatest ACC players of all time. Let's start with Airline Al. Al Tucker attended Oklahoma Baptist University with his brother Gerald. Being the sons of ex-Harlem Globetrotter Slick Al Tucker, the brothers grew up experimenting with flashy moves on the playground. Together, the brothers created the Airline Play. A play where Gerald would lob passes to Al, who would catch it midair and dunk. Al and Gerald may have been the first to do it on a big stage, but David Thompson and NC State were the first to make it a focal point of an offense, earning Thompson the nickname Skywalker in the process. With the alley-oop woven into the NC State playbook, Thompson became a three-time ACC Player of the Year and a national champion in 1974. He is the only player to ever have his number retired at NC State. But David Thompson only dunked once during his time at NC State. From 1967 to 1976, the NCAA enacted the Lou Alcindor rule, which made dunking illegal. Lou Alcindor, better known as Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, dunked on opponents so bad that the NCAA was just like, all right, you can't do that anymore. So David Thompson was forced to drop in all of his alley-oops from above the rim to ensure his fingers didn't enter the cylinder. Thompson's one dunk, on a breakaway towards the end of his final home game, he crushed one through just for the fans. The points were immediately wiped from the board and he was assessed a technical foul. Worth it. Does it look cool? Yeah, I guess so. Cool. In 1975, Thompson chose the ABA over the NBA. The ABA was more focused on the entertaining showmanship aspects of basketball than the NBA. They were first to have a three-point line, and in 1976, the ABA had the first ever dunk contest. The final round ended with Dr. J defeating Denver Nuggets high flyer, David Thompson. In the 50s, Wilt Chamberlain would slam home bad shots midair. In 1961, there's evidence John Havlicek was throwing lob passes to Jerry Lucas while at Ohio State. There really isn't one defining moment when the alley blasted onto the basketball landscape. But if you're looking for alley pioneers, look no further than Al Tucker and David Thompson. And let's all just thank our lucky balls that dunking isn't illegal, because that would be fucked. Thanks for watching. If you have any ideas for other first videos, let me know in the comments. The less I have to do, the happier I am. While you're at it, hit subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, right, keep doing that. <laughs>